Didn't we just talk about a bunch of handhelds and how there might be too many handhelds on the market? Yes, I did say that. But now is about the time where we talk about the next generation of PC handhelds. And of course, everything will start with this right here. The AMD Z2 Extreme APU. The most popular non-Steam Deck handhelds have used the Z1 Extreme. You know, the ROG Ally, the Ally X, and the Legion Go. If you've seen people play games on an ROG Ally or an Ally X or a Legion Go, then you probably already know what a Z1 Extreme is capable of. Yes, on average, it's faster than the Steam Deck at the same resolution, especially at the 15 watt TDP. But its main advantage is you can go even higher than 15 watts if so desired. This is most useful when you decide to plug in your device. But one of the more peculiar weaknesses of the Z1 Extreme is that, at times, at low TDPs, it can be weaker than the Steam Deck, which is undesirable at best. And here comes the Z2 Extreme. And the only thing we know for certain is that it's supposed to show up sometime in early 2025. And of course, they're touting better battery life and better performance. Digital Trends also mentions that Jack Quinn, Senior Vice President and General Manager of their Computing and Graphics Department, wants to play Wukong for at least 3 hours, not 45 minutes on existing platforms. Now, without hard benchmarking, this doesn't really mean anything. But this statement does seem to affirm AMD's commitment towards power efficiency, unlike a certain other green GPU manufacturer. While I'm not surprised that they could make more efficient and slightly more powerful hardware, the real question is how do they achieve that much of an increase? Well, it starts with just having better hardware. ETA Prime did a pretty rudimentary benchmark between a Z1 Extreme powered device and something with Strix Point. The Verge seems to suggest that yes, the Z2 Extreme will be based on Strix Point. And yes, ETA tested multiple games on all the same settings and all the same TDPs. As per ETA Prime's own testing, he determined that there were frame rate improvements across the board. Now obviously the results vary game by game, but we've seen as little as 8% and as much as 20% in certain games. That's still all games and nothing else. So that's one major side of the coin, just having better hardware that's also more efficient. But there's another technology that AMD seeks to leverage. You want to know what that is? AI. But before that, if you liked this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife really lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. AI is one of those highly controversial additions to technology, especially in regards to generative AI. And while FSR traditionally hasn't used AI, even AMD is talking about using AI for their newest iterations of FSR. DLSS, Nvidia's option has always been AI, even DLSS 1.0. Yes, in the last video I sort of dismissed AI because I was like, how is this going to help gaming? Well, I forgot DLSS was AI powered. And yes, this is before they called it AI, they called it machine learning back then. Same thing. Yes, while Nvidia is leaps and bounds ahead of everyone in terms of AI or machine learning, AMD is starting to leverage this too. In fact, AMD is already leveraging AI in their AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 algorithms. To clarify, yes, you don't need AI hardware to use their frame generation techniques, but given that their new APUs will have AI accelerators in them, all of AMD's new AI technologies, you know, the new version of FSR whenever that comes out, and Fluid Motion Frames 2, that can take advantage of the AI hardware AMD is embedding into their APUs. But of course, someone will say that using all of these AI features to generate frames to seem like it's running at a higher frame rate, doesn't count as truly running at a higher frame rate. Same deal with upscaling from a low resolution to a high resolution. Some would argue that it doesn't count, even if you take measures and use AI to upscale it. But of course, this is a much grander discussion for what counts as true performance and what counts as quote unquote AI performance. So who is getting a Z2 Extreme? Well, AMD says they're working with several partners, as per digital trends. We can safely assume at the very least that Asus and Lenovo are definitely getting Z2 Extreme versions of their hardware. And yes, as per this video on PC World's channel, AMD suggests getting out to more partners than ever before, because remember, the Z1 Extreme was only really on like some of the major PC handhelds. It wasn't like on any IN Neos or GPD wins. So could you see an IN Neo device or a GPD win device or I guess even a 1X player device powered by the Z2 or Z2 Extreme? Maybe. Who knows? And yes, on the topic of the Z2 Extreme, we have to talk about how they're calling it the Z2 Extreme. 
which means that they're probably making a Z2 as well. For those who don't remember, there are two different variations of the Z1. The Z1 and the Z1 Extreme. The Z1 Extreme is the one you see most people talking about. It's the one that's more worth it in the end, and it's the one that most people have when it comes to the Legion Go or the ROG Ally or especially the Ally X. The regular Z1 version, I can think of only one device that ever released with a regular Z1 processor. That being another variant of the ROG Ally. A much cheaper variant of the ROG Ally, but one that's so bad that it's honestly not even worth it. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. If you're in the market for a PC handheld, don't get the ROG Ally that has a regular Z1. If you're going to get an ROG Ally, you may as well get the Z1 Extreme version because it's that much better. I would rather live in a world where, yes, they only make the Z2 Extreme and they don't make a regular Z2. But due to the nature of manufacturing these chips, a Z2 is inevitable. Could a regular Z2 be good for like, I don't know, lightweight emulation and some indie titles? Yeah, it could be. It could be the best indie machine you'll ever buy. But to be honest, I really wouldn't get one because the Steam Deck exists. Yes, the Steam Deck is better than the regular Z1. Will it be better than the regular Z2? It's hard to know. But honestly, if you're just looking for an indie machine or a cheap emulation machine that's based on x86, then you really can't go wrong with like a refurbished Steam Deck or like a used Steam Deck off of eBay or some crap like that. So the next generation of handhelds are upon us. We'll be seeing them early next year as per AMD's estimations. New handhelds with increased battery life and increased performance? Sign me up. The Z1 Extreme made its debut in 2023 and it's now 2025 two years. While some would say that's a little too often, we live in a world where plenty of devices get re-released every single year. You know, like a brand new iPhone every single year. Having a device release every two years instead of having a device release every single year is far more stomachable in my opinion. But of course, we're leaving out the elephant in the room. You know, the Steam Deck 2, because there's no telling what the Steam Deck 2 will be besides being more performant than the Steam Deck, and that Valve wants to wait until there's a more substantial performance jump. Could Strix Point be that performance jump? Who knows? A Steam Deck 2 could improve upon the Steam Deck in many different ways, because an improvement is guaranteed. But what aspects of the Steam Deck will be improved? Well, that's up for Valve to decide. Performance, yes. Battery, yes. But there's more to these handheld upgrades than just better battery life and better performance. At least, I would assume so, right? I really want to test these batteries though. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.